<laughs> all jokes aside, all jokes aside. Hello, beautiful people of the internet. My name is Greta. It's nice to meet you. Or if you're back again, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. I'm honored. I am coming at you from New York City, um, which is why you're going to hear at some point an ambulance, the police, or some old lady screaming. But it's nice to meet you. I'm a UX designer. I work in corporate. Yes, I have sold my soul. Okay. I've been working in my like big girl full-time corporate job for about a year and three months. Oh my god. The time, it flies. It really does. But it's been a time. I've learned a lot. I work in e-commerce, which means I'm customer facing, which is honestly my favorite part about my job is that I get to positively affect people's lives. So I thought I would save you some pain. I'd save you some surprise and just tell you all of the things that I've learned throughout my career up to this point about UX design. And of course, this goes without saying, these are just based off of my experiences. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what this video is about and they are sawing something. Design, design, let's go. won't necessarily be designing every single day. That being said, the amount of times I do touch a design software like Figma during the week is pretty often, I'd say like three to four times out of the five days of the week. But there's other days where you just won't be designing because you'll be doing other parts of the UX design process. Creating design solutions is more than just actually designing the designs, you know? You gotta do research, you gotta do competitive analysis, you got to test your designs after you've designed them. You need to test them with real users and then you need to look at the feedback and then you need to synthesize the feedback and understand what the user is trying to tell you because sometimes users don't really know what they want, right? So you have to look at their behavior, you have to look at their body language, all of that kind of stuff. And then you need to decide how can I better improve my designs when you want to go ahead and iterate on that first version of your designs. And that's like, honestly, the great part about UX design is that every day can look so different, which is so cool. Okay, you need to sit down for this one. You need to sit down for this one. What you learned in school for UX design or your boot camp for UX design is not really an accurate representation of UX design in the real world. I know. Because in school, of course, they teach you, you know, everything is so perfect and linear. You're gonna have step one, you have your problem statement, you write out your problem statement. Step two, you find your user personas and you come up with those basic characteristics of your user personas. I can't remember the last time I actually like created a user persona at work because it doesn't always work in a linear way because sometimes you're pulled into a project where it's like halfway done. Maybe some UX designer was already working on this design and they got moved to a different team and now you have to step in in the middle of like them designing and then you have to skip the research phase and then you go into the design phase. It's never really linear. It's not A, B, C. Sometimes you do step B and then you have to do step A again, and then you have to do step C. So there's a lot of back and forth. I'm sorry, sis, I'm just telling you the truth, okay? The third thing I've learned is that UX is like an overarching field and within it, you have different specialties. When someone tells me that they're a UX designer, I'm like, okay, is there more? Sir, can I please have some more? Because it's like, you can be a UX designer in so many different fields. You can be in aerospace, you can be in video games, you can be in healthcare, you can be in e-commerce, customer facing like me. So 
there's just so many different specialties, which is awesome because, you know, if you already love UX design, you can love your job even more by going into an area or a field that you love. So if you're really into healthcare, especially with COVID, there's been so many different companies that have grown from the ground because of COVID and they need UX, UX designers. So you can really find what you love in UX design, which is awesome. Number four, you cannot fall in love with your own designs. I'm sorry. When I first started out in UX, I would get so attached to my designs. Like I would fall deeply in love with my designs. I would marry my designs. I would spend hours creating these designs and these experiences and I'd be like, okay, this is the perfect solution. Like there's nothing they can tell me. There's nothing wrong with this design. I pixel pushed everything. Everything is the perfect distance, the perfect color, the perfect interaction. Like there's nothing wrong with this experience. There's, there, there's no flaws. And then I'd show it to users and there'd be something they didn't like, something they didn't understand. And there would always be something I'd have to change. That's how UX design works. It's a lot of designing and then you iterate and then you design and then you iterate and then you design and you iterate until you get to that, not necessarily perfect solution, but the best solution that you can get to with the amount of time that you have, with the resources that you have, with all of those things taken into consideration. You know, there could be times where it's not even the users that tell you that something's wrong with it. It could be your manager. It could be some like higher executive vice president of the company who says, oh yeah, we're not doing that anymore. And you're like, sir, ma'am, I spent hours on this design and you're telling me we're just gonna throw it away? That's why you just cannot fall in love with your designs. That being said, it's okay to push back when necessary. What do I mean when I say push back? So there might be situations where a product manager, a UX researcher, or just someone on your team is like, no, nah, that is not the right solution. But you know, for some legitimate reason, you know in your heart, in your soul, maybe you've tested this already with users, or maybe you've spoken to plenty other UX designers on your team, you know that it is the right solution, it's okay to defend your designs when it's appropriate. Sometimes it's just not appropriate, but you'll know. And it's especially helpful when you're having those conversations to have other UX designers back you up, okay? You're gonna need some backup. You can't just be there out on the battlefield on your own, okay? It's good to have your manager back you up or a senior UX designer or someone on your team that's preferably working on this experience with you, but make sure that when you do that, when you do defend your designs, you have a reason. Don't just be like, because it is, or because I worked 10 hours on this, how could it not be the right solution? You need to have like a legitimate reason. Either you tested this with users or Maybe they're suggesting something that isn't possible on the back end, that an engineer has told you is not possible. There's some restrictions that they don't know about. You have to have a reason. Numero says, don't have to be good at everything in UX design. You don't. When I was starting out and I was applying to all of these entry level UX design roles, I was terrified. I was terrified. I was like, okay, I know I'm applying for entry level UX design roles, but I wanna make it seem that I'm not entry level. So I'm going to learn everything there possibly is to know about UX design before this interview. So I would read so many different articles about UX design. I would read books about UX design. I would literally talk to everyone and their mother who was in UX design, which is okay, don't get me wrong. Like I do encourage reading articles. I do encourage reading books. I do encourage talking to other UX designers in the field, but don't go crazy. If you are entry level, it, there's a reason you are entry level, okay? They don't expect you to know everything. They want someone who is flexible. They want someone who can learn different techniques on the job. 
They want someone who's open-minded, and sometimes it's good to be a generalist at the beginning of your UX career. Everyone over time will find what they're really good at, but you don't at any point have to be good at everything. Now, this might not come as a surprise to a lot of you, but the amount of collaboration was a little surprising to me. And I honestly love it. It came as like a good surprise for me. I love working with people. I love collaborating with people. I love learning from other people. It is not a job where you can just ignore the Z world, okay? You can't just sit behind your computer and be like, don't talk to me. It's not that kind of job. It's the kind of job where you're gonna be talking to your product manager. You're gonna be talking to the engineers. You're gonna be talking to other UX designers, your manager, their manager. Like you're just constantly talking to people and learning from other people. So keep that in mind. If you want to get better as a UX designer, it's gonna require more than just showing up to work. Of course, of course, having a job, having a work experience is going to make you a better designer over time. That's obvious, right? Like with work experience, you learn things, you meet people, you're presented with new situations, and then you just learn from those experiences. But I've seen and I've found for myself that when I'm learning in other ways, more than just showing up to work, reading articles about UX design, talking to other designers, just setting up one-on-ones with people outside of my team, learning from engineers, maybe even learning a little bit of code, not because I have to code day to day, but just because it helps me understand the restraints and the restrictions that come with, you know, the back end, the front end, etc. So I find when I'm doing all of those things, I'm becoming even better, an even better designer. The amount of time it's going to take you to really get to the next level in your career, whether that's like senior or a lead or principal or whatever you want to work towards, it's going to take longer if you just show up to work. You'll get there quicker if you are doing a little bit of extra work, putting in a little bit of extra TLC, love and care, you know, into your work. This might shock you, but being really good at design tools isn't everything. That's because UX design isn't just creating buttons and creating rectangles and circles on Figma, okay? It's being able to think critically. It's asking the right questions about a customer problem so that you really understand the, the problem that you're trying to solve for. It's being someone who thinks of all of the possible scenarios that a user might be in when they're using your experience. So it's not just Figma, it's not just being really good at Adobe XD, it's not being good at all of the Adobe products. Yes, those are expected. You're expected to know at least one design tool. And honestly, once you know one design tool, you can really learn any other design tool in like less than a week. You want to be able to understand the UX design process as a whole. Honestly, the one tip and the one part about UX design that is the hardest for me to wrap my brain around is that designs don't have to be perfect for you to get feedback. Ho! Oh, say one more time for the people in the back. In fact, I would say, I would go as far to say that waiting for your designs to be absolutely perfect in your own eyes for you to get feedback is a terrible idea. Like, don't do that. Stop it. The worst thing that has happened to me is I spent hours on a design. Not just hours, days. I spent days on a design. And then I go to a design review meeting with other designers and they rip that ish apart. So get that feedback early so that you can avoid spending so much time on a design that you're probably going to have to change anyways. And I would say, honestly, that showing like other designers, other researchers, your designs when they're in a low fidelity state is even better because it allows them to really just focus on giving feedback that's related to the logic, that's related to the reasoning behind your designs rather than just the aesthetics and like the looks and feel of the design, which is important, but that can come later. Oh my God, why is it dark? Okay. 
So there you go. Those are the 10 things that I have learned from being a UX designer for a year and three months now. I hope you got some, you know, got some notes in. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. If there's more things that you think you've learned, if you're also a UX designer, please let me know. Let everybody know. Save us some pain. Save us some time. Put it in the comments. And if you're new, you know, you can subscribe if you want. If you want. You don't have to. But if you want. You can also follow me on Instagram. I'm over there. I like to share, like, other things other than UX design, like my outfits my life in New York City. I'm going to go put my chicken in the oven because I'm starving and I will see you very soon. Bye.